Hey guys, welcome back. We have a quick video today. I have a lot of things to work on. So this is what we're dealing with here. We're going to upset some people. We're going to give 10 things that Pokemon collectors, not all of them, but most of them I do not want to hear. Yeah, that's right. And I'd like to know down below, which one did you like hearing the least? And did I miss any? Are there any that I should have included in this list? No, they are not in order. If you'd like to put them in order, in your particular order, you can do that too. We're not doing that. That is not what we're doing today. We got to get into it. Number one. First up, we have the vintage versus modern debate. And regardless of what side you're on of that debate, it's dumb. It's a dumb debate. It doesn't need to happen. It's stupid. It's uh, why are you doing it? Some people will claim that you can't invest or have a modern collection that appreciates in value. Too much is printed. Too easy to grade. Too many graded. Pop reports pump into the max. Others will say that all the money that could be made in vintage already has been. That it's gate it's gate kept. The the people that already got it, they bought it all. It's never, it's not available anymore. It's not going anywhere. It's all people selling to each other. That the old cards are boring in comparison. What the hell? Uh, maybe I'm the best person to talk about this because I collect both. Modern is heavily printed, but you have to take into consideration that chase cards have never been this hard to pull. So that's have never been this hard to complete. There's an interest in it that people will come back to eventually. One would think, as long as Pokemon's around, people are going to be like, oh, remember, remember the pandemic? Remember when we came back? Modern will be a vintage eventually, regardless of where you want to make that cutoff. Vintage, while it might seem boring with no background art, lack of lazy chase stuff, not needing to open 3,711 packs to get my Moonbrion. It all plays an important role and is part of the history of Pokemon cards. There are many ways that you can appreciate Pokemon cards. Many ways to accumulate a value, make money, grow your collection, whatever your goal is. Arguments about your way of doing it being better than others is essentially a waste of time. If you spend time learning about your interests, whatever part of the Pokemon card collecting you would like to do and make smart purchasing decisions based on that. You spend enough time in the hobby, you're going to be just fine. Number two. Not everything will go up in price and some things will even retrace. I know, mind blowing. This is a tough lesson for a lot of people and will be again in the future. Reprints, as some like to call the R word, other times referred to as the hard R are a real thing. Anyone who claims they can predict reprints are lying. Sometimes they don't make sense whatsoever. We had Ultra Prism, uh, which got a reprint right before going out of standard. It might have even been like the same month. It was very close. It didn't make any sense. So if you're a strong, if, if you're a stunk dog a creator that is forecasting them, you're in for a bad time. Same if you're banking on that stunk dog telling you how to a stunk dog. Stuff that spikes in price hard, you, you stop chasing the FOMO. You got to take a step back. Steep curve, usually best to swerve. We got to take a step back, look away, reevaluate, see if, is this something that is likely to come back down? I know the pandemic was tough. It's hard to believe. It's hard to not bite in on that stuff. When you see it go up, you see it go up again, you see it go up again. It's still going up. You're missing the boat. You're, you're missing it every day. But a lot of this stuff has retraced, gone back to normal. It just, it's not sustainable. None of it was sustainable. So just take all of that uh, on a micro. We see this all the time on like a micro scale of the new thing that comes out. The new flashy thing. It spikes in price. Oh no, you're going to miss out on it. Everybody wants it. Everybody's posting about it. Everybody's chasing it. Everyone's competing over it until they're not anymore and they get bored of it. And it probably is going to come back down to earth. There are exceptions, so but more likely than not, uh, once interest dwindles on it, there are a lot of things to be interested in, new and old. Careful. Number three. For the most part, predicting or trying to determine which set is a better investment, which one should you buy more of, is a waste of time. Just because a set is not popular on release doesn't mean that it won't outperform others in terms of sealed product that the singles inside it all of a sudden they become more desirable again it's a lot of predict the future stuff that no one can do i can't do it no one can do it 
you can't do it. No one can do it 100% of the time. Again, you can make some educated guesses, but that's it. That's all. Do not put all your eggs in one basket. I know people are like, what the hell, Rattle? What's on screen there? That is the the good old Sword and Shield Rebel Clash. Again, largely named Rebel Trash. No one wants it. No one cares about it. No one cared about it then. Well, they kind of cared about it then. Um, but why is the Elite Trainer Box so damn pricey? Well, that is because no one wanted it. Because no one wanted it, there was still excess. They didn't see that there was a need to reprint it. That lack of reprints is now why Rebel Clash ETBs are expensive. Is that, is that wild? Is that wild to anyone? Remember, it, it, there's no... It, do not sink too much time and effort into trying to predict these things. Because, because no one can. You can't. I can't. We've had other examples like Evolutions, where too much was printed. We hear it all the time. The, oh my god, that's a, you know, that'll never go up. That is printed to oblivion. Yes, it can be printed to oblivion. Uh, and even though Evolutions was printed to oblivion, it was in every product to the point that everyone was like, why the hell am I still getting Evolutions packs in all of my mixed pack products? People were upset about it. People did not want it. It was too much of it. People were excited about it on release. It just it was there. It was there and there and there. And it was there some more. Same thing with Shining Fates. When it's still available, people don't want it. People want what they don't want. People want what they they don't want what they don't want. People want what they can't have. People want what they can't have. So evolutions being that example, uh, it was it became harder to find. We had new interest in. No one would have predicted. No one could have predicted. They were like eighty dollar booster boxes. Anyone could have bought as many as they wanted. They could have lined their pockets. If anyone could have, again, the predict the future thing, which cannot be done. Don't do it. Don't even try. Don't even try to do not other than like a general set of rules, a general set of thoughts, a general feeling on some stuff. Do not bank on being able to predict the future because no one at that point, no, no one, no one was like, oh, you guys are stupid. I'm going to buy all these evolutions box for $80 a piece because the pandemic's going to happen. People are going to want base set. All these people are going to get back into the hobby because they're going to be bored at home. They're going to want to jump in on the craze. Base set's going to be too expensive. So they're going to want to open evolutions. No one did that. No one was counting on that. I'm sure there's lots of people that held on to boxes, but no one was able to. No one, no one could have predicted uh, that the the box would spike in price the way that it did. Again, most people that were around since Evolutions came out were very sick of it. They didn't want to see it anymore. Get it out of my face. Or don't worry, we got some doozies coming for the end here. If you haven't been upset yet, now said this a billion times, but time in Pokemon and learning about what you're buying is much more valuable than asking someone what you should buy, getting a stunk dog advice, etc. If you don't want to commit to learning it, just invest your money elsewhere. There are a lot of ways to spend that time making more money, doing something else. Investing in something that you enjoy, maybe something that requires less effort, at least not effort learning something that you don't want to learn. If you don't want to learn it, then don't learn it. If you don't, it, there's, you got to spend a lot of time learning. And I know yeah, everyone thinks the shortcut cut is to is to pay somebody else to make those decisions for you. They can't predict the future. Warning, heads up. Just a, I know people do not want to hear this. They can't predict the future. You can't predict the future. Even if you spend time learning Pokemon, you will never be able to 100% predict the future. But you can at least know what you're doing to some extent uh, to make sure that you're not getting absolutely hosed on things. No, it does not guarantee you're going to make money. No, it doesn't guarantee you're going to make a lot of money. It, don't, it, it usually guarantees that you're not going to make that much money. It's Pokemon. If it, if it was easy to just stonk dog 69 it and people could just flip it and dip it. I mean, it was in the pandemic. Welcome to hard mode. It, it Hard mode activated. It's not that anymore. It's never been that. It's not that anymore. It's usually not that. Number five. Buying something when everyone is after it is almost always a bad idea, especially when it is more than what it was from retail or the initial way of acquiring it in regards to the modern stuff. Almost everything is less expensive at its least expensive when it is a generation or two old. We go back, we look at Sun and Moon, we look at early Sword and Shield at this point in time, we look at a lot of the other stuff, even the alt arts are kind of retracing at this point. 
again, it's not the new flashy thing. It's not what everyone's after. Set some products, get reprinted. If you're doing modern, you have to realize this. You have to know this going in. You got promos can be re-released. We had the Futsal Pikachu, I guess the biggest offender of this, uh, which was released in a different way. We had, even even if we want to go Felt Hat Pika, it was re-released. Could it be again? Definitely possible. Very possible. The Pokemon Company has done it before. They've even changed the the type of release with, with the Felt Hat and with the Futsal Pikachu, which was supposed to, the football, Futsal Pikachu, for anyone that doesn't know, was supposed to only be given out to kids in the league that were playing in the league, in the Futsal League in the UK. That's it. That's all. So it was a mega expensive. People were buying them for thousands of dollars. And then all of a sudden they're like, you know, that was probably a bad idea. We shouldn't do that. We should probably just release them at the game store. Game store, like G-A-M-E, all caps store. Uh, and they did. And now, and then, I don't know what they are now, but they were very inexpensive. A lot of people got burned on that because if you bought one, you got shafted for a lot of money. Careful. Careful with promos. Careful with product being released. Careful with play playable cards that rotate out of standard. If you didn't learn that, if you don't learn that, if you collect modern, if you're doing anything with modern and you do not want to waste money, you do not want to burn some money, be very careful with playable cards. They can be both, if you have extras, you can trade them or sell them to get something that you actually want that's going to retain value. Or you can you can think, hey, maybe I shouldn't buy that thing that's super playable and very expensive because it's playable. Or if you're opening modern product, which is a bad idea financially, promise you that you're never going to break even on 99.9% .9 of what modern stuff comes out. Uh, on average, on average, I'm not saying that you can't open one individual pack, hit a, you know, hit something big, uh, and make money on it. That's that's just gambling at that point in time. If you're doing it that way, to know what's playable and what you should get rid of, what you can get rid of, what you can sell off. If you're opening product, if you're opening a lot of product, or even a little bit of product, is it's an important part of it. So if you're going to be a standard dog, you gotta know standard. You got to know the trading card game to some extent. You got to be able to look at prices. You got to know that stuff in order to, to min-max and not absolutely lose your ass on opening modern product. I guess that could have been a point in itself. Opening product is a bad idea financially. If you're having fun doing it and you know that going in, by all means, do it. I do it. You can do it too. Uh, but uh, just know what, what you're losing there, the amount of money that you're losing. Make sure you're having fun if you're opening it. We're we're getting on to a whole other point here. So, uh, yes, drops the um, the everyone after something. Yeah, guys, a new rarity, a new set comes out that people care more about. At least until the next one. It's just it's the cycle. It's what it is. It's the carrot on the stick. Carrot on the the fishing rod. The little it's the it's the meme with the carrot on the rod. You're the horse. Even uh, vintage can have this happen where people all hop onto the same stuff. There's been times where people just, they, they, they think they're going to miss out on a gold star, on the gold stars, something like that, and it has retraced. This is uh, examples that go a little bit further back. We're not, we're ignoring the, the pandemic stuff. Yes, that stuff did, uh, but there is examples, uh, micro examples of that stuff kind of happening. It can happen. Again, if everyone's posting about it, you have a lot of competition. Six. Ooh, all right. Next up, we have the Pokemon Company rigged my product people. Yes, th this is a big one. We're getting, I guess, maybe we lied a little bit. The, the end of this tier list is a little bit more juicy, a little bit more rage inducing. And uh, yes, no, no, the, the Pokemon Company did not rig your product. We have the example here where the stolen Fusion Strike hits. People are like, oh, damn it. I opened Fusion Strike and I didn't get any big ass pulls that are very hard to pull. I didn't get those one in one in 2000 super chases to the extreme. N no, you didn't. But it's not because of the stolen product. It's not. They made a statement in the second video there. I know I have to keep explaining this, um, even though they, the Pokemon company made that statement that the hits were not taken from packs, that they did not impact the packs. They did not, no impact was packed on the packs. In order for those stolen hits, okay, we're, we're okay, let's, let's pretend that they're lying to us. Uh, we, let's just, just look at the most likely scenario here. In, 
or the least likely scenario. In order for those stolen hits to have an impact on your polls, on polls in general, the fact that they would be missing from the from the packs that made it to distribution, they either needed to be removed from the pack itself or stolen from the feeder that inserts them. Because otherwise, someone's just going to get more of those hits. I know it looked like a lot of hits. It looked like, oh my God, I can't believe that was all of the hits that were ever supposed to be infusion strike. No, not even close. We're talking big ass levels here. They say they replaced them. There would have had to been somebody that was putting this into the feeder. The, the, this wasn't stolen from the feeder itself. They didn't go up with a box and pull them out of the feeder. There's, there's just, there's no way. I'm not buying it. Couldn't, basically couldn't happen. Not that it basically couldn't happen. So, um, they get more. The, if, let's say they're like, oh, damn, a box of mega, super mega extreme hits. Chase cards are missing. They get another box. There's more boxes. If Even if they ran low, if they ran low on them, they would be like, okay, the stack of, of super mega hits. We need more of these. We need to print more. And then they would put them in the feeder the same way that they do. Now, th that goes without saying they can and have made mistakes with seeding this stuff. Absolutely can happen, has happened. We've seen it before with certain packs that always have a hit, certain packs that suck. Um, probably harder to notice the certain packs that suck because you'd have to, you'd have to open like just a ridiculous sample size. No, little Timmy that opened a booster box and got a crappy booster box. That doesn't count. Little Timmy that opened three packs. Yes, you bought it for Little Timmy and his Christmas was ruined. Actually, well, when did, when did Fusion Strike come out? A couple of, maybe before a few, yeah, I think it was a couple of years ago. Man, time flies when you're having fun. They get more, stick them in. The majority of the time, the packs are not rigged. The majority of the products, they're not rigged. With Fusion Strike, there was even God boxes that got to, that came to Canada. Um, I think dozecards.ca had some of them at one point in time. I don't think they have any anymore at this point, but it happens. Mistakes can happen with that stuff, but the odds of someone actually just stealing it straight off the line, basically, basically non-existent. That's what we're dealing with here. My apologies to anyone that feels like they got ripped off. I know everyone had their pitchforks out, but that's just that's just not how it works. Um, your you know your twenty five packs that you opened could have been very good or very bad. That's just the 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 kind of sets that we're dealing with, the kind of rarity that we're dealing with. When you when you have stuff that's like one in two thousand packs to pull it, you're you're probably not gonna pull it. Even if you open 2,000 packs, you might not pull it. Even if you open 4,000 packs, you might not pull it. It's just, again, the, the it's a sample size that basically no one can open, including myself. Even when we opened four cases recently, we don't get everything. We don't get everything because some of these large sets, the odds of getting these things are so low that you'd have to have like tens of thousands of packs open before you could see like the real results appear. It's insane. It's absolutely insane. But it also throws people for a loop. They don't want to hear that they don't understand probability, but they don't understand probability. It's unfortunate, um, but uh, hopefully th that gets the point across. It's it's The Pokemon company is not trying to screw you. I promise. Number seven. Know what you're thinking. That is PSAPikachu.com, where you can shop for all kinds of different awesome products. Speaking of different products, we have to talk about the the people the, that believe wholeheartedly that pull rates are different on certain products or by certain waves. Yes, errors can happen. Yes, products can be errors of sorts, errors, and these rates can be better or worse. Um, based on if they if they do an oopsie doopsie condition can be better or worse based on the wave based on the batch more more the batch than the wave itself i see a lot of people that say oh what the hell the uh this uh, the printing this print wave is sucky ducky i opened three boxes and uh, they all suck yeah well it could have been well if they all came from the same case it could have been off the same machine at the same time that machine could be Funkin' and Dunkin', the guy that's working there could be rubbing his dick on the cards. Again, there's a lot of things that come into play. But if you have stuff that's close to each other, uh, whether it's centering, whether it's damage on the cards, whether it's it's stuff like that, if, if they mess up something, yes, you're more likely to get more of it in that same batch. Uh, if it's in the same box, if it's in the same case, if it's in the same palette, it's, it's, there's usually a trend there. So, the vast majority... Of the product 
is not is not error. I know it's it's wild. We've opened a lot on the channel. People have opened a lot. The vast majority of product follows the rules. Is what it is. Is not Pokemon Company trying to screw you? We've we've shown countless times on the channel here that all products, all packs, they all have the same pull rates with a large enough sample size. And we can even hit that large enough sample size, not to determine how hard or how easy it is if there's a little bit more difficulty in pulling one you know, hard to pull thing over another. Sometimes you hit multiples of the same thing. Sometimes you don't. Uh, by that time, you're opening several different cases, different products, different stuff. And yes, there's going to be there's going to be some overlap there's going to be some tendencies to hit the same thing and there's going to be conclusions that are that are drawn that are incorrect ones booster boxes they're consistent because the packs are seated in order i know that is going to blow people's absolute minds so if you're looking for consistency if you're only opening 36 packs of a product and you want to be consistent you don't want that extra gamble factor you go with the booster box. 36 loose packs from somewhere reputable. It's got to be from somewhere. I'm not talking you get it resealed from some whatnot. G baller 69. I'm talking you buy it from somewhere reputable. Whether it's big box that doesn't put stuff back on the shelves. Whether it's your favorite game store who has no reason to uh, sabotage your, uh, your modern product. They really don't. If they're even semi reputable, they don't have time. They don't have the need. They don't have the desire to screw you over. The same thing. It's just like people want to be screwed over. They want to use that as an excuse. You can't. You're not getting screwed over. If it's someone reputable, if it's the Pokemon, Co like the Pokemon company also doesn't have any incentive to like shaft you on pulls. They don't. They want to make it a pleasurable experience. There still needs to be rarity involved because as we've seen, if it's too easy, people don't give a shit and don't want it. They want what they can't have, but they also... You know, it, it has to be somewhat a somewhat reasonable experience, which is why I'm kind of surprised that Elite Trainer Boxes uh, haven't at least guaranteed something. Because if they put like the packs in order, those are hand-packed. We've seen the factory footage. They probably still are. I would be surprised if they changed that process up. We've seen on the, it was on the Millennium website where they were like hand-packing the ETB. So if they're just grabbing packs, that's just, it might as well be loose packs at that point. Pretty much. Um, so... If, if, you, if you open 36 packs, you might get a result that looks like a booster box, but you might not. You might you might get less or more. Let's say on average, whatever set you're looking at, there's 11 hits. There's 11 hits per booster box. If you get 36 loose packs, 36 packs from ETBs, from blisters, from single sleeve boosters, from three pack promo blisters, from mixed pack products, any of that stuff, you can get something that looks wildly different. But if let's say you get several sets of 36 Let's say you get a thousand loose packs. It's going to look very identical, um, very, very close, like scary close to what would come in that that many booster boxes, an equivalent amount of packs from booster boxes. These sets are huge. I, I know it throws it throws people for a loop when it's one in three or one in six for an ultra rare or better. It's, it's weird things can happen when you have six packs. You might not hit an ultra rare. You might hit something crazy. You might hit. Let, let, we're going to Sword and Shield here before the trainer gallery. One in six packs. You open twelve packs. You could get nothing in twelve packs. Very possible. You got one in six. One in six and one in six. It's crazy, right? On average, you're gonna get two ultra rares or better. But when your sample size is that low, probably not. Sheets, sheets. We're gonna talk sheets here because the Pokemon Company. The amount of effort that would be required in screwing you over for little benefit on their end, because you got an upset customer, you don't want that. You don't want the odds to be different for people. You also, they're already kind of trailing into the the the, the space where the odds are so uh, difficult to pull the chase stuff, the chase that everyone wants, uh, that they're upsetting people, that people are getting upset, unreasonably upset. They're not changing up the sheets. When they print something out and they set up all the equipment, the sheets are printed the same. The cards come out on the sheets the same way. That all has to be set up beforehand. It would be extra money and extra effort for them to recreate that entire process in order to print more cards when they already have the materials, when they already have the equipment all set up and ready to go. The same reason why they have to have a pretty good reason to reprint something. Because they have to put it all, they have to set it all up before they go ahead and reprint another set. 
if the set needs it, they're probably going to do it. Sometimes maybe they just, they're like, well, what are we going to print today? Maybe we print some Ultra Prism because, or maybe it was just too late. They wanted to get it out earlier, but it was in queue. They had to print some other stuff because products are coming out. There's a lot of things that can go on at the factory itself that, uh, that can postpone things. There's a lot of things that they have that they have to do to make these releases happen on time. We've seen it with the new card games. The new card games absolutely struggle. MetaZoo, as much as I don't like it, they struggle. They struggle with release dates. They tr struggle with, like the, I don't know if it's the printer time or what it is exactly. But th to keep the train running, to keep it going, and yes, it probably helps now also. I mean, it helps that they were such a big company to begin with, but also probably helps now that they have or own Millennium. It's probably a, a large reason to why why they actually purchased it. Um, card quality, I will say, has definitely improved. Whether or not that's a symptom of that, that could be another example here of confirmation bias. We can only speculate on that stuff. We don't know. But largely, the, 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 the incentive for a Pokemon company to screw you personally by making your hits not in the packs by making any of that stuff a bad experience, they want you coming back. They want you buying more. They want you to have a good time. They want you to generally pull things that you like. There's And for them to spend extra money and go out of their way to make that not happen is just not happening. You made it all the way to number eight. Next, population control by grading companies. My God, people like to speculate on this. And um, I guess just anything to do with that in general uh the same thing with like condition or anything like that like the, the pokemon company is not printing stuff in certain conditions they want it to be as good as possible they don't care if if there's too many tens or anything like that but population control by the grading companies conspiracies conspiracies about the grading companies in general i think are more likely more often just somebody's confirmation bias once again uh with the and it, it has more to do with the fact that there's incompetence uh at these grading companies with their minimum wage sorry slightly above minimum wage slightly less than a dollar more than mcdonald's employees uh starting out that are grading their cards that aren't spending very much time doing it um all of that is going to play a very very big factor here um uh, May, maybe we could argue it's a thing with really big cards, expensive cards, where the special attention is paid to those. Maybe they don't want to put out too many that are... There's going to be extra an extra spotlight on a lot of that stuff. So maybe they're more careful with, with some of that. Maybe the, the head grader that they all like to, to brag about uh, is, is really putting some effort, some time and effort into that. But the reality is that they aren't spending more than 30 seconds on your sub $1,000 individual cards. Your bulk submission, even your mid-range stuff, they don't care. They don't care. They're putting it in plastic. They're going to give it a grade that is as, as, as I, I guess, the least controversial thing they can do as fast as they can do it. Yes, the grading scales can change potentially with different training, different eras, different stuff. We have CGC who just right up changed it altogether. That well, they, I guess they changed it. They changed the difficulty based on how you graded, and then we're not going to get into the whole CGC thing. But yes, that stuff can change to some extent. But people love to blame that when again, it's it's Johnny Jimbo Jr. He's he's working there. He might he might be lazy. He's probably lazy or he probably just doesn't give a shit because I don't know how you become passionate about going into work and pumping a card through every 30 seconds. Maybe there's someone, maybe there's, maybe there's a couple of people there that are excited to do that every day. Uh, but I kind of doubt it. They probably have to do a certain amount of cards, so they have to do it as fast as possible. Maybe he goes in there, Johnny Jimbo. Johnny Jimbo Jr., not to be confused with his father, Johnny Jimbo, might hit the 8 button for everything in an entire submission because it's just easier. And like, is, are people going to debate that? I mean, if it's every card, which we've seen happen before, maybe they do. Some graders are also just going to be harder graders than others. Uh, there's a huge amount of bias. There's a huge amount of opinion that is going into that stuff. And to, you're not going to get the same person doing it every time. It's not going to, even if it's the same person, maybe they're having a good day. They got their dick sucked before they went into work. And they're feeling great. They're feeling very generous. They're hitting tens instead of eights. They're pressing the button. They're making you some money. Who knows? 
But what it comes down to is that it is all very overvalued and a game of chance. You should value your own opinion. If you spend any amount of time in Pokemon, learning about the stuff, learning about condition, all of that stuff, pre-grading, that kind of thing, you should value your opinion more than a, a bulk submission to any of the grading companies. I don't care which one it is. And this is why it's also important that you buy the card and not the grade, even if you want graded. Even if you're buying graded cards, even if you collect graded cards, that's what you want to do. That's how you want to spend your money. That's how you want to make your money. That's how what you want to do, by all means. And if, even if it has to be in a certain grade, you should be still looking at the card, not the grade. There's tens that look like ass. There's sixes that don't even have a ding. There's lots of misgrades. They can misgrade. Uh, and you have to be aware of that to think that you can just blindly trust the authenticity or the grade on any of the cards that have been graded uh, is... It's not a good idea. It's just it's just not a good idea. A lot of people do it. Maybe a lot of people use it as a crutch as they're entering the hobby. Uh, and still, they're probably better off. You also need to know whether or not it's a fake slab. Fake slabs are a thing. My apologies. You can't just blindly trust that it's in a slab. It's got to be real. The end. Nine. The second to last point here. Yeah, we're talking scalpers. People fucking hate scalpers. They want to blame the scalpers. People want someone to blame. Please give us someone to blame for the love of God. Uh, but I'm here to tell you that scalpers are way less of an issue than people want them to be and always were. I don't care when it was. Always were. Not that big of a deal. Not that big of an issue. Um, when, you know, was it in the pandemic a pain to get sealed product? Yes. Did it, was it, were people upset? I mean, justifiably, yes. You're probably a little bit upset that you can't get some product that you want to open, some product that you want to have during the pandemic because people were buying it. People were buying it to open it. People were buying it to resell it. People were doing both. People were, people wanted it. It could not stay on shelves. It was not going to stay on shelves uh, no matter what. We had people who were beating the scalpers. By failing shopping carts with product, um, and they're not a scalper though, don't worry about it, and not part of the problem because they were opening it, or putting it on a shelf behind them in their sealed collection, or picking it up for others. They wanted to make sure that their friends got some. So it's, it's silly to pretend that the collectors didn't have more to do, whether they were long-term or temporary collectors. We've seen a lot of it fall off. We've seen a lot of these uh, temporary, the temporary interest. I mean, it's always the way. People are typically interested in Pokemon or re-entered a Pokemon for a year and then they're done with it. They're bored of it. They did what they wanted to do. They burned themselves out. They don't want to be here anymore. Maybe they'll come back someday. Maybe they won't. Maybe it takes a pandemic for them to be here. Who knows? So it's silly to pretend that the collectors didn't have more to do with product shortage than clipper, flippers. And by collectors, I mean you know any collectors, temporary or not. Someone has to buy it from the uh, dreaded scalpers for them to continue to do it. So was it just scalpers buying from scalpers? Isn't that a good thing? Because the scalpers burn themselves. They end up with the product and they can't sell it because they're selling it to other scalpers. But then they run out of scalpers to sell it to. Scalper hot potato. As I mentioned back then, back in the, uh, the, the hype of hypes, all of it was temporary. It was all a temporary issue that would be either solved by Pokemon printing more or when interest in the stuff dwindled. Where are the people that wanted this product now? A lot of that stuff got very reprinted. Your Vivid Voltage, prime example. Where are all the, uh, the Vivid Voltage people that wanted to open Vivid Voltage? They only, wanted, they only wanted to open it on release when it was expensive and not available? I thought, thought so. I absolutely thought so. So, what's the problem, guys? And why, why, why are the collectors, why are the people that are complaining about scalpers not... Uh, flocking to these Walmart and Target shelves anymore. Again, it's a little side note, a little side thing. Walmart is not a good deal on Pokemon cards, for the most part, other than like a Black Friday thing or a Markdown thing. Same with Target. They're not a good deal. Usually, most of the time, unless something weird comes out that is not available anymore, you're almost always better off buying from a game store. Buy from a game store whenever you can. If there's some kind of crazy deal at Walmart or Target, I can't really blame you. Do what you got to do, but at the same time, we're not going to pretend here that shopping at Walmart or Target is a good idea. It's meant for uh, the people that either want to impulse buy, that are too lazy to order something or go to a game store instead, and don't care that they're spending extra money on it, essentially. 
or little Timmy throws it in the cart and his mom pays for it and it doesn't know or realize that, hey, $8 booster packs are probably not a good thing. You made it all the way to 10? What the hell is wrong with you? The last and maybe the absolute best point I have here, the most rage-inducing, maybe the thing that people didn't realize or will realize, is the fact that a large portion of current Pokemon card collectors miss the craziness that was the pandemic. I said it. I, I'm sorry. My apologies, guys. But I think I think that's exactly uh, the nail on the head. Even though... They all let on that they can't wait for things to go back to normal. They miss that rush of finding something that others didn't have. They miss the prices on the thing that they grabbed off a Walmart shelf going up overnight. I don't... I, I, where are they? Where are the, where are the people that are excited the booster boxes are affordable and uh, available on release? And if you don't buy it right on release, it's still the, it's still the same price. Still available. What the hell is going on here? Isn't that what everyone was wishing for? Isn't it? And not to mention that, not just that sign, but also we see the traces that remain of the uh, hard-to-acquire stonk dog stuff are popping off. All we got to do is take a look over at the, um, the, felt, the felt hat pika. Uh, when you have something that even resembles the pandemic, something that you can't quite get, Everyone has to have it. Everyone wants to buy it. Everyone can't miss out on it. We got the items from the event itself. Everyone needs those. But no one's, why, no one's complaining about any of the, uh, the actual set releases. Anything like that. Crazy. It's crazy, guys. Take care. Join the Discord. See you next time.